Oh, and we have the QA and automation team from Nashville. All right, awesome. All right, we're ready to get started. Um, so, hi everyone. Welcome to Test Complete 201. I am on the line with Pramod Rao and in the room with Christina Lowe. Um, and I'm Alex Fusco. We are coming to you live from Boston, Massachusetts. And yeah, we're ready to get started. All right, so. First, I would like to talk about our upcoming conference, our very first SmartBird Connect 2017 where we're very excited because this is our first conference and we would love all of you test complete users to be a part of it. So just a little bit about the conference. Day one will consist of live interactive product training classes and day two will feature unique insights from SmartBear customers and industry experts. As you can see on the slide, we are holding a June discount. So this means hurry up, buy your tickets, and you will get $100 off each ticket. Um, and I'm going to put a link in the chat box for, um, it's the Smart Bear Connect website, and you guys can read more about the event and register, purchase tickets, um, and that we are very excited again. And um, I will also type in the discount code that you will use when checking out so you can get your um, $100 off each ticket. All right. All right, just a few housekeeping items. Um, please download the handout. It has information about future classes and other helpful resources. Um, that will benefit your test complete use. Next, we would really like to make this class as interactive as possible, so please add all of your questions to the questions box and we will get to them throughout the class and at the end. Last but not least, please answer the exit survey at the end of the class. We really appreciate your feedback and take it very seriously, so please just take a minute to do that. Not long. All right, next I'd like to go through your test complete training options. So I, my guess is that most of you attended test complete 101. You take the exam, and then once you pass the exam, you get test complete 101 certified. You know, and what you're in right now is test, test complete 201, uh, which is held quarterly, along with the next class, test complete 301. And after you complete those classes, we will send you a Test Complete Smart Bear Academy certificate. Next, we have our premium training options, which is a monthly two day course, keyword driven testing, scripted testing, mentor hours, and then what that gets you is access to hundreds of Test Complete videos, and you will become expert certified. So, like I said, the next class um, is Test Complete 301. That's a mistake. Um, and it's on August 17th at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's Test Complete 301, and I will put a link in the chat box for that. All right, so um, running the show today will be um, Promote Rao. And then running the logistics of the show will be me, myself, Alex Fusco. And again, please ask us any questions um, during the webinar and we'll get to we'll get to them. All right, so Pramod, do you want to go over the agenda? Yeah, hello, good morning everybody. This is Pramod here from Nows Info Systems. And uh, the agenda for today is basically dynamic creation of objects wherein uh, I will uh, go through some of the object find methods that are available with test complete and how to uh, next is how to create the object at runtime 
and also we will look at uh, the different ways of working with Excel and INI files which is more of a tips and tricks uh, kind of uh, session as, as well as uh, some general topics like XML validation and uh, region checkpoints which is used for uh, verifying uh, images etc. So uh, with that uh, let me start sharing my screen and uh, can you make me presenter uh, Alex? Hello. Yep. Okay, can you guys see my screen now? Yep. Okay. All right. So, uh let's start with uh, the dynamic object creation so uh, that was the uh, first thing on the agenda so what we're going to do is we're going to see as to what are the different ways of dynamically searching for an object in the uh, using test complete so uh, let me just put my webcam this side all right so uh, basically uh, there are uh, let, test complete basically provides several search methods that uh, allow you to basically uh, find objects on the tested application. It could be a web application, it could be a desktop application, or it could be a mobile application, right? So uh, the different ways of uh, doing this is one is to use name mapping, which is the uh, primary method that uh, most of you guys would be using. And I guess a lot of you guys would uh, be aware of this dynamic search facility as well, which is uh, available with this complete. So uh, basically, uh, the way that uh, in, in dynamic search, the way that we uh, find the object is by either the name or the ID attributes or a combination of uh, multiple uh, uh, ID and uh, uh, the other uh, attributes that are available to that particular object. So as you know, each and every object has its own properties and methods. So based on the properties, we can identify the object. Usually the ID would be the ideal uh, uh, case to use because most of the time the IDs will be unique within the, for, for a particular object. So uh, sometimes what, all, what uh, happens as well is that uh, uh, for example, uh, your uh, the lists that are created are dynamically created in your applications. I don't have a, a application wherein I can show you, but uh, uh, if you can get me, uh, basically what I'm trying to say is some of the objects are dynamically created, uh, especially in web applications. For example, table values that are present within tables, etc. So in case if you need to play around with them, then uh, the dynamic uh, search method would be an ideal way to uh, create the object at runtime. So uh, with that, what we'll do is we'll move to the dynamic object crea uh, creation types. So uh, there are different types of uh, search, uh, dynamic search methods that are available in test complete. The first one and the first and foremost one is a find, find child, find all, and find all children. So these methods, they allow you to find, search for the uh, object, and it's, all, it's also common to all the tested objects. Now there are other methods which will allow you to find uh, the object based on whether it's a web application, or uh, mobile application, etc. So the native web object find the second uh, method over here. If you can see page dot native web object find. Mode. This is yeah. Real quick, uh, do you mind going into presenter mode on your slideshow? Oh, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Awesome. Yep. All right. So uh, yeah. So. First one, as I told you, the find, find child, find all, and find all children. These search methods are all common to all the tested objects. That, that means to say it could be used for a web application or it could be used for a desktop application as well. 
Now there are certain methods which are specific only to the web application. Uh, that is the uh, native web object dot find method, the evaluate XPath and find child by XPath methods, the query selector and the query selector all methods. Now the native web object fi uh, dot find method. This is basically used to uh, find the web object based on a particular uh, ID property or a, a single property of the object. And uh, the evaluate XPath and find child by XPath is used uh, by uh, uh, to find objects based on the XPath expressions that are uh, uh, need to be input to that particular uh, method. And the query selector is the CSS selectors uh, that needs to be input to these uh, to this method, which will search for the object a single object or multiple objects. So the evaluate XPath uh, method basically uh, gives you a, a array of objects that is which are matching to that particular XPath and you need to select the first one then you have to select the zeroth element of that particular array that has been returned by this uh, method but find child by XPath method it gives the first child that is uh, uh, found from the uh, tested object so let me go into the next uh, uh, next slide wherein we see as to how to decide what dynamic search method that we choose, right? So uh, basically uh, we have to look at the method specifics as well as the testing needs. Basically if you want to use multiple properties to identify an object, for example, sometimes what happens is that uh, some of the objects uh, have a lot of unique properties and uh, there might be some few differentiating properties with which you could identify the object. At that po point in time, you could use the find method and also this uh, dynamic search method also could uh, speed up the tests by uh, identify the, uh, identifying the objects uh, faster than you could do, right? using name mapping. So now uh, the find method which are common for all the objects. So find, find all, find child and find all children. So this will search for any object on a web page. It can be a web page or it can be a desktop application. It can be a mobile application as well. So uh, this could also be used for flash, flex and silver light objects. And again, you will have to specify a certain depth. Now by depth, what I mean is uh, basically what happens is uh, the tested object from then on, it, there is a hierarchy. It might contain child objects, right? And the child objects might contain another set of child objects and grandchildren and so on. So the depth is if you specify one, it is going to uh, a search within the uh, first particular uh, uh, child object of the tested object and if you specify two it will go to the next child next sibling and if you specify three it will go to the grandchild etc so it's always uh, good to use a higher depth uh, if you're uh, because basically you would not know the uh, uh, hierarchy of the objects within the uh, uh, within the particular uh, tested object uh, at during most of the time when you're dealing with dynamic uh, objects and also you could search by the value of one property as I told you or a set of properties which could be used as well now uh, you could uh, it would also return multiple objects or one object based on the uh, uh, for example find will return one object and find all will return multiple objects and similar to find child, find child will return only one object and find all children will return multiple objects. So, uh, and also you can uh, use wildcard characters, you could use regular expressions in order to uh, search for a particular object and uh, this is the find, find all, find child and find all children. So let's get into a little bit detail as to what is the difference between find, find all, find child, and find all children, right? So find method will find, as I told you, only one object within the uh, within the tested object from where you're trying to find for a particular property of the object. 
and find all will return an array of objects and this array uh, could be used to uh, let's say for example you want to find the uh, all the text boxes that are available within a particular web page at that point in time you could use the object type as uh, the uh, text box and then you could uh, uh, pass this uh, to the find all method and this will return an array of all the text boxes that are available within that particular application. So we'll see a little bit of examples as well, uh, but uh, this is just the uh, theory part of it wherein I'll tell you as to what is the difference between each one of these methods. Then we'll uh, uh, pr uh, run a, a small test to see how these uh, 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 different methods work. And find child, find child, as you know, the child, uh, it finds for a particular child object within the tested object. And find all children is similar to the find all method, wherein uh, it searches and finds for all the chil child objects with a particular uh, uh, property uh, that you're trying to search for. So uh, let's go ahead and... Uh, see a small example as to how we could use this find, find all, find child and find all children. So I'll just take find and find all and you could use the same concept for the find child and find all children. So uh, let me open test complete and let's go here, let's create, I'm using VB script as of now for this particular session. So uh, you could use JavaScript as well or any other uh, scripting languages which uh, are supported by Test Complete uh, for your uh, 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 for your application for your testing needs. So, for example, find methods. So let's say that I want to find this object here, right? So this is the Smart Bear sample website that is uh, uh, made available on the internet by Smart Bear. And here we have two text boxes. One is the username and one is the password and one is the uh, login button, right? So what we're trying to do is we'll try to find for this particular object, the username, and enter the text into the username of object by using the find method. So for doing so, as I told you, you could use one property or you could use a set of properties uh, a multiple set of properties as well. So if you're using multiple properties then you'll have to create an array and then pass that particular array of property names and property values to the find method. So let's start with uh, one property and uh, we'll go to the uh, others, uh, the multiple properties later. So what I'm doing is I'm just setting an object because this is going to return one object for me and whenever you're doing, uh, whenever you're returning an object, you'll have to set it in order to uh, obtain that particular object. So let's uh, take this page for example. So we let me highlight this uh, uh, text box, and I copy this full name. So I'm using, I mean, uh, you could use uh, uh, name mapping as well, but for uh, the uh, for this session, I'll be using the uh, full name of the object instead of using the name mapping and what I do is this is the username box so right now what I'm going to do is uh, okay so we have this right so now we go and say find method so use the find and what I'm going to search for is the ID STR so ID STR is the ID property of the uh, control which is unique to that particular control itself. So the developers are the ones who assign the ID and uh, the ID will usually be unique and it won't be repeated across the multiple objects but there are certain uh, situations wherein the uh, developer might not have given the ID property for that particular object, especially with dynamic uh, tables which are created, etc. So at that point in time, you could use multiple properties. So we we'll look at that as well. So uh, for example, right now we have searched for, we are trying to find the object based on the ID property and the name of the property, uh, the, the uh, value for the property is uh, 
the ID STR is the name of the property and the a value for the property is this right here. So that is what I'm using. And since I don't know what is the hierarchy, I'm giving a higher depth, so I'm just saying 60. And I'm giving this refresh true. So this will uh, refresh the entire uh, a a tree hierarchy and then it will find that particular object, right? So now I say obj dot set text. So set text is a method which is available for your uh, for your uh, text boxes and password boxes, etc. So now if I run this particular uh, code snippet, what this is going to do is it's going to find this particular object and then set the uh, value in that uh, uh, text box as uh, test. So let's quickly run this and see what happens. So I'm just going to run this. So as you could see here, the text was entered into the text box. So this is the find method using one particular property of the object. So let's say that I want to use multiple properties instead of one property. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to declare some variables. Let's say an array, array of property names and array of property values. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign the array to uh, this particular uh, variable. So property names is equal to array of, let's uh, take for example, let's say a couple of properties. Instead of ID, we'll use some other property here. So let's see how we can make use of that property. So first of all, uh, let's say that I want to use the uh, object identifier, okay? So I'll say object identifier. Object identifier, sorry. Object identifier. object identifier and the second property that I want to use is the object type. So I'll say object type. So this is the property uh, names. That is the uh, actually the uh, the property that I'm trying to uh, use. And now I have to provide the values of that particular property in order for me to find for that uh, object right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the property values now so we have the object identifier under the object identifier I'm going to give the property which is present under object identifier and for the object type I enter the same value as text box which is the property value for that particular object now what I'm going to do is instead of me passing this find ID STR and the control uh, uh, the ID value, so I'm going to pass this array itself. So once I pass this array here, it's going to identify the objects based on the multiple properties and values. So let's go here and we are done. So let's run this and see what happens. Okay. Okay, sorry. Let me not declare this variables. Rather, I'll use this. Okay, so as you can see, uh, this has identified the objects based on the uh, multiple properties. So I used object identifier and object type. So you could use any of the uh, properties that are available within that particular uh, object and it has to be, only thing is that it has to be unique to that object itself. So uh, 
before we proceed to the next one, so any questions till now, uh, we can take those questions and uh, we could, let me just go through some of the questions. I see some of you have questions as well, so. Do these fine methods work in keyword mode? Uh, these fine methods, they do not work in keyword mode. So you will have to use scripted testings in order to uh, find, uh, scripted testing in order to find the uh, objects dynamically. So there is, I mean, it does work in keyword mode as well, but the way that you'll have to do it is we'll have to run a code snippet. So if you see this keyword test, so uh, let's say that uh, I have a keyword test and I want to create this particular object and then assign it to a value, right? So what I could do is I could run a code snippet or I could run a script routine, which will basically uh, uh, create that object for me and give me the object back. And uh, with that, I could use the uh, find and find all and find all children and find all child methods find child methods. So, uh, but you cannot uh, find for the method directly using the uh, uh, using the keyword test. So you'll have to run either a code snippet or the run script routine. So you could write a small function which will basically uh, return the object and uh, using that you could uh, play around with the uh, 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 find methods, etc. in keyword testing. So does that answer your question? Yeah, sure, I'll send this PPT out afterwards. You could, uh, I'll share it with uh, Alex and uh, Christina and they could uh, uh, basically uh, uh, send, it, send it over to you guys. Yeah. And right now as developers no longer using ID, the application is developed in Angular GS. Yeah, as I said, so, uh, it's not only the ID that you could use, you could use multiple properties as well. So we use the object identifier and the object type, uh, for example, in the, uh, uh, in this, in this particular, uh, uh, code snippet that I just wrote uh, now. So similarly, you could use other, uh, properties as well. And what is an XPath? Okay. We'll come to XPath later. So, uh, basically XPath is a, uh, uh, syntax that is used uh, the, uh, uh, for to identify a particular object on the uh, using DOM basically DOM is document object model so use in the DOM uh, each and every element is basically uh, defined with the uh, pro pro properties and attributes right so uh, whenever you are searching for a particular uh, ID ID is an attribute of that particular element so for example, if they have put a text box, they would have put an input tag and with that tag, they would have given the name of that particular uh, tag as well as the ID STR, ID property for that particular uh, control. So when you're writing an XPath, you could directly search for a particular object by using uh, this uh, uh, syntax, the XPath syntax that is available. So we'll look at uh, uh, some examples by using XPath as well. And we'll also use query selectors. Query selector is another way of uh, identifying objects and that is uh, the CSS selector. So for example, this is, that is nothing but the style sheet. So uh, basically the style sheet syntax is used to identify the object uh, in CSS selectors. So uh, ho I hope that answers your question. And uh, is the dynamic search? Yes, I have just uh, demonstrated the uh, dynamic search for the find method. Now we'll go ahead and do it for the find all method. And then you could try it out on your own for find child and find all children methods, right? Okay, and uh, how can we use the find method if there is no unique property or set of properties? Uh, there will be a, a unique property that will be available to that particular object. So uh, you could use this find method to identify uh, 
properties only if there is a unique uh, identifier. So you could uh, either use uh, multiple properties or a set of uh, or a single property as I told you. So that is the uh, way that we could uh, but if there are no unique uh, 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 unique uh, properties to that particular object then it won't be an uh, ideal scenario. It, it basically it will have something which is unique to that particular control. So I hope that answers your question. Do these methods also work for non-web application? Yes, as I told you, the find, find all, find child, and find all children will work for desktop applications as well as web applications, uh, and non-web that I that is meaning non-web applications as well. Then uh, keyword mode, I think I answered that. Why am I? Yeah, name mapping. See, it all depends. As I told you. Uh, you could go ahead and use name mapping, but uh, when you uh, when you uh, when you want to use uh, name mapping, you, if it it is all a choice basically. If you want to go ahead and use name mapping, you could do that. But uh, uh, the way that uh, uh, the whole reason for using the dynamic objects is that you could have your own object repository created. Uh, using an Excel spreadsheet or using some uh, variables wherein you could store the properties of that particular object and then if there is any changes in the properties of that object one change in that particular file that you have uh, for example I've done this over here so let's see one example so what I'm doing is uh, I say uh, the uh, I create a, a variable and I assign an array to that. So I'm using native web object. I'm using the ID and the control name and the uh, uh, value of the tag name. So uh, here, what I could do is instead of me going and updating the objects and name mapping, all I need to do is come back here and just change the property uh, value here, whichever property value is changed. And that will take care of uh, updating the uh, your particular test suite that you have so it all depends on what kind of uh, uh, scripting you're doing what is the framework that you're trying to use etc so it all depends on that I hope that answers your question so yeah so find uh, all and find uh, you said speed right so basically, if you're using the find method, as I told you, it returns only one object, but the find all will return uh, multiple objects, and you'll have to find the uh, right object by using the property type, etc. So uh, that will uh, definitely take longer than the find method, yes. So I hope that answers your question. And uh, please explain. Yeah, as a, a depth parameter, right? So depth parameter is basically, as I told you, first one is the tested object. The tested object is the control at which you're looking at. So if it has ch uh, child objects within that particular control, that means it's a container element, right? So the container can have one child or it could have multiple children and underneath it. So the first depth one means to say that all the it will search within the uh, objects which are in the depth one that is the first level child objects now if you give the depth as two then it's going to search within the child and the next sibling of that particular child and if you're going to say three it's going to look for the child the next sibling and the next sibling and so on so that is the uh, uh, use of the depth parameter in uh, the find find all and find all children find child methods is the find method yeah single then yeah if you use the ID property the ID property is the fastest that uh, it, because the ID is uh, mostly 90% to 95% of the time the ID is unique for a particular uh, object so uh, that's the reason uh, the uh, ID property is the first uh, choice to use in order to find for a particular object.
but you could use multiple and that is going to yes because if uh, there are a lot of uh, properties which are which you're using to identify the object and most of them are similar and only one of the uh, properties is unique then it is going to take a little longer to identify the object but that is hardly noticeable it's not uh, it's it's all in a fraction of milliseconds so uh, that shouldn't uh, uh, decrease the speed of execution etc so uh, do you ever try this with uh, within a window application embedded okay okay I think we'll get back to some of the other questions a little later so uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at the find all method and then we look at certain other uh, uh, methods which we could use for example the XPath evaluate XPath as well as the CSS selectors and after that we can uh, look at uh, the uh, rest of the questions and then get back to you guys and so <coughs> next one is the find all right so what I'm going to do is the find all method it returns an array of objects so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say obj is equal to So let's say that I want to find all the text boxes that are available on this particular web page. So let me do one thing. Let me log into this. And let me go to this particular page here. So this has multiple pro uh, text boxes, right? So let's go ahead and so this is all relative to the page that you're looking at so for example this is the page that we are looking at right now the page is nothing but uh, test complete is process.axpx right so the if the page changes you will have to change the page as well so right now we were on login so I'm going to change it over here okay so now what I'm going to do is, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use the find all so uh, instead of using uh, the uh, uh, property names and property values array over here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, the object type object type is nothing but uh, the type of object or the control that is so if I say object type I will get the object type as text box so since we are searching for text boxes so I'm going to say object type is equal to text box and give the depth again and set this to true so now we have an array of objects so in order for me to traverse through each of the object I'll have to use a for loop so I'll say for i is equal to 0 to u bound of obj so we're going to enter all the values into this particular uh, text boxes so I'm just going to say obj of i dot set text and what we'll do is we'll just uh, set the text as test ampersand i okay so if I run this now what happens is uh, it basically will enter all the details as test into all of the text boxes that are available within this web page so let me run this now so if you can see here it's entering all the details into this right 
So this is the find all. It finds for all the objects with similar properties. So it could be an object type or if you could use uh, multiple properties, you could use multiple properties as well. It will find all the objects that has the same set of properties that you have passed to find the particular object. Okay, so any questions till now? So, why this? How to decide whether a keyword or script? Uh, basically, uh, the keyword test is all uh, in most of the time used by novice users. And you could make use of a combination of keyword test as well as scripted test as I told you wherein you could call a script routine wherever you need to do complex processing. But complex processing ideally is very difficult and it's very time consuming to do with uh, keyword tests. That's the reason uh, uh, the, key, the scripted test gives you more power over the uh, control or the application that you're going to test against. So you could use uh, a combination of keyword as well as uh, scripted test wherein whenever required you could call scripted routines or call a uh, code snippet etc to uh, run that particular uh, uh, set of code that you're uh, trying to uh, test. So uh, yeah, but ideally uh, for uh, if you're writing a huge framework which will basically uh, uh, do uh, if you have a test suite which will uh, uh, do a lot of uh, which has a lot of uh, the application which has which is pretty complex in nature it would be ideal if you would go ahead with the scripted testing it all uh, also matters to a, a it boils down to the choice of uh, the person as well or the uh, the team that is trying to do the uh, automation so if they would if they, are, if they have more people comfortable with uh, keyword test, you could still go ahead and use keyword test. Or if more people are inclined towards scripted test and you have the expertise because you know you need to know a scripting language in order to uh, uh, write the scripted test. So at that point in time, you could choose uh, the scripted test. Or you could use a combination. Okay. So would like to know more about distributed testing in test complete yeah distributed testing is not on the agenda uh, for today but uh, I would I, I can give you a few pointers on that as well so basically when uh, uh, you have let's say for example uh, you want to run a test on multiple machines so there is a, a, a process or a workflow wherein you perform certain actions on uh, uh, one of the machines and then you want to uh, run the next set of uh, uh, code uh, or the test on a different uh, uh, <coughs> different application or a different uh, uh, machine itself. So at that point in time what you could do is you could uh, set up synchronization points and with the synchronization points what you could do is you could say that okay fine after I complete this particular uh, part on this uh, host machine that I'm running my test on. After that, I could go with the uh, uh, log into the next machine and then run, the, uh, run my test from then on on the other machine. So basically what happens is you're trying to uh, is say that, okay, fine, wait until I complete this part of the uh, uh, test in this machine after that you could go to the next machine and then you could run your uh, tests as well so probably we can have a different session for that uh, because that uh, that is not covered in uh, that is not part of today's agenda as well so if we use a higher depth will it impact on the execution time uh, the way that uh, uh, test complete identifies the objects is as soon as it finds it within the particular uh, the the lowest depth it doesn't search with the higher depth as well so it doesn't make a difference so it won't slow down the process as well so it, it should be fine but if you're using a higher depth as well so if I create a method using script how I can integrate with keyword test okay so uh, you could do that so uh, basically what you could do is 
you could go to the keyword test here and I'll say run script to Tino be here right and I can call whichever uh, function that I have written in order to uh, do the processing so let me just show you that for example I want to run a script routine so I just go here and pull the script routine and then it will show me the list of available uh, routines which are there within my uh, scripted units so I could choose whichever unit that I want and whichever uh, test that I want to run or whichever, whichever function or subroutine that I want to run so when I select that it creates an entry over here like run keyword uh, uh, run script routine and then you could return the value into a variable uh, you could use uh, the set variable value or you could use some other uh, uh, the object type of variable in case if you want to return an object etc so once you do that then you could do your processing with that particular object uh, in uh, this in the keyword test as well so code snippet I'm using the approach to find my I'm using approach to find by tag name property value property name can I declare often use as arrays yes you could use uh, uh, often uh, used as arrays and then you could uh, you could you could use that as well as it supports uh, elements like iframes yeah uh, yeah it does support uh, frames as well so you could uh, search for objects with an iframes as well so what is the recommended method for object search okay so we'll come to the next uh, set of questions later so now we looked at the uh, find find all and uh, it's for you to look at find child and find all children which works similarly uh, as find and find all method now this is the web search only so for example for, for as I told you the evaluate XPath native web object dot find these methods and the CSS selector methods they are only used to find objects on a web page and they cannot be used on uh, uh, objects like uh, your uh, flash flex and silver light applications and uh, this will be only proper HTML applications that are uh, 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 it supports only a HTML applications basically so uh, you could use a single property as as you had mentioned I think one of the person had used uh, single properties so for example if you want to search only using single property on a web page you could use this native web object or find method now this is available only to a page object so from the page object you have to find the particular object so this takes in three parameters basically so it takes in the um, ID and it takes in the ID or any other property name and the property value and also a, a tag name basically uh, as you know all the HTML elements they, are, uh, they have a tag for example uh, a text box would have an input tag a select uh, uh, a drop down would have a select tag and so on so uh, that is uh, the, the, those are the property the tag names that you need to use so let's go ahead and see the native web object dot find so let's say obj and I'll take this page itself I'll take the since we are in this page right now I'm just going to use the same thing so I copy this and instead of find all what I'm going to do is I'm going to say dot native web object dot find and I give the property name the property value and the tag name so let's look for spy on the object and see what are the property names that we need to use so this one let's say that I want to use this particular quantity so I search for ID so this is the ID of the object so I'll say ID str
and the value and the tag name. Let's see what is the tag name for this. It should be input. I will copy this and input. Okay. And then the same thing, set text. This should work here. So it has to, let's say it's an integer value, so I'm going to say 20. So now if I run this test, it should input 20 into the box. Okay. So 20 was entered here, right? So this is the native web object dot find method. Now for XPath, for XPath, in order for you to find XPath, you will have to install Firefox on your system and the XPath can be easily found from there using uh, the uh, Firefox browser. So let's take for example, I'll go ahead and open this application on Firefox. So let's say that I want the XPath for this particular uh, control, right? So I directly right click on this, but you should install two more uh, add-ons to this. One is the Firebug and one is called the Firepath wherein you could uh, use this Firepath in order to uh, search or create XPaths, custom XPaths as necessary for that particular application. So right now we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say inspect with Firebug and it will take me to that control. So if I want to copy the uh, element, I'll say inspect in Firepath panel and this is the XPath that is created for this. So I could use this in order to find my element, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out of this again here. And let's use this itself. Okay. So we have the XPath now. So let's try to find the element with the XPath. So come here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the same thing dot evaluate xpath is the one that I need to use and I give the xpath here and since, as I told you, XPath will return all the properties that are available, uh, sorry, all the objects which have the same properties. So I need to find the first element which is found. So I'm going to give the index as zero. So what this will do is it will take the first element which is found in this particular array. So if I run this now, so it should enter the text into that particular text box. So let me run this quickly. Okay. So it has entered the text here. So similarly, you could use find child, uh, find uh, ch uh, child by XPath, and you could try that out and then see how that works. The next one is the CSS selector. So uh, we covered find find all and find all uh, find child and find all children and then the page dot native web object dot find and evaluate xpath and find child by xpath similarly you could use the css selector as i told you it is uh, the method that you need to use is the query selector and there are two types query selector and query selector all as you uh, have seen with the other methods. Query selector returns one object and query selector all returns multiple objects. So this is the uh, basically how you use the query selector. So let's use that and see how that works. So I'm going to say dot query selector query selector and I need to pass the CSS path. So in order to do that, you have to install the CSS uh, 
add-on, another add-on which is available within the uh, smart, uh, with, within the uh, Firefox browser or you could use uh, Google Chrome as well. So for example, I need to use uh, right click and I'll say CSS selector. So I want the CSS selector, right? So let me just highlight this, highlight this object, inspect element. inspect element okay and this is the CSS selector so I'll say copy unique selector and if I go here and paste this here so it should point me to that particular element right so this is the firepath panel which is used to find whether your XPath or the CSS selector is correct or not so I'm going to pass this value over here to this query selector method and you can see that this will enter the text as that is provided here. Okay. So this is the way that you could uh, dynamically uh, create objects at runtime. Now again, when you're creating objects, you also need to make, uh, uh, you also need to see that uh, you wait for the objects. For example, if you're navigating from one page to the other, and at that point in time, if the uh, uh, application or the control, whichever you're trying to find is not available on that particular web page, or the application, then uh, your uh, test is going to fail, or your uh, the it will not return an object. So at that point in time, you need to use uh, certain while loop condition uh, loops, which will basically uh, wait for uh, the uh, specified amount of time for that object to be available and uh, uh, for uh, test complete to create those objects at runtime. Okay, so that's about the CSS selectors. Now uh, the Excel and INI files is what we also had this had on the agenda today. So the way that we could work with Excel uh, and INI files, for example, Excel files itself, you could use the Excel.application.com object, or you could use Excel as a database, or you could use the DDT methods. So the DDD methods, I uh, think most of you should be familiar with this. So we'll just look at the Excel.application.com object and the Excel as database. So in order to do that, I have a small uh, code snippet which I've already created. So uh, we'll go to that. So as you can see here, we are reading this Excel, right? So I have to create an object which is of type Excel.application and I have to open the workbook, whichever is, uh, workbook that I need to open, which is given by this path over here. And then I need to select the sheet in order which, uh, uh, wherein I want to uh, basically uh, use that particular sheet. Then I go and get the row count and the column count of the sheets. So uh, the used range dot rows dot count is used to get the rows uh, row count of uh, the uh, values that are there in the uh, Excel as well as C column count is used to uh, use raise dot columns dot count will give you the column count and then you could loop through them and then uh, get the value or set the value whatever you need to do and then you can close and quit the Excel so this is the Excel uh, the, uh, method this is the Excel dot application com method and there's another one which you could use for uh, Excel as a database. So basically what you do is uh, here, you create an ADODB.connection. So ADODB is used to connect to databases. It could be used for uh, Excel as well. So you provide the connection string here. So the connection string is nothing but uh, the uh, provider. The provider is ace.oledb and you need to specify the source. The source is nothing but the path of the Excel file and you need to pre uh, 
also use the extended properties and set it to Excel 12.0 and XML. So in case if your uh, 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 Excel sheet has headers, then you set this header is equal to yes. This will uh, assume that the first column is always the header. And then uh, you have to open the connection. Once you open the connection, then you read it by using a record set, which is nothing but a query that you need to pass. So you could use uh, a simple query like select star from a, a, a login sheet, right? Login. So the way that you're going to write the uh, uh, SQL statement is the the way that you're going to write it is, for example, you want to select from the login sheet all the values. So I'll say select star from login and put this in quotes and I could use a where clause as well over here if I want to select for example on a based on a test case ID so I can say it where test case ID is equal to one or whatever right so this will return a record set and using the record set I could loop through and I could uh, basically uh, process all the uh, 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 process the Excel spreadsheet in whichever way that I want to work with it. So I'm able to see your. Okay, so uh, next one is the INI files. So for example, uh, INI files is, I, I, uh, as you know, it's all configuration files. So you could use this as uh, your uh, configuration file in order to uh, read the uh, uh, application URL, the, uh, uh, the environment on which you're trying to test the application, etc. So in case if you need to use this INI file, you could use storages.ini and give the path over here. Only thing to make sure is whenever you create the INI file, uh, the INI file is nothing but it has a section. So it, also, it always has to begin with root and then you have to use a section name. So the section name is, uh, let's take for example name and uh, username is the key and this is the value. Okay, so it has a section uh, key and value pair. So for example, if you need to get this value whichever is stored for this username, then at that point in time you have to use obj or obj ini is the object that I have created with storages.ini and then you need to specify the section and you need to say get subsection and get option, give the key and this is a, a default string but in case if the key is not found then it is going to return an invalid string and similarly with the if you want to write to an INI file the same thing declare it here and then section get subsection so in case if the section does not exist exist over here this get subsection method it will always it create the section and then write the key to key and the value pair over here then you need to do a save of that particular INI file in order to stay and save the values and then uh, move on to the uh, uh, then uh, uh, then uh, basically uh, set the objects to nothing that is you're clearing the uh, uh, memory that is allocated right so that is about the INI files the next one is uh, XML validations in order for you to validate if an XML uh, confirms to a particular uh, schema or not, you need to bas basically use this, uh, you need to install the script extension over here. So the script extension is nothing but uh, the XML checkpoint uh, script extension. You need to enable that. In case if it is not enabled, then you need to download that. And then uh, this is the validate XML by X XST uh, uh, which is available on Smartware website. Download this and install the script extension. Once you do this, 
basically what I have is I have a sample XML and I also have the schema file. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to validate this XML by XSD. One, I've used a XML file which is uh, not correct and the second one is the correct file. So if I run this, so what happens is it validates and then this shows me that validation failed on the first one because the uh, it didn't conform to the schema and it'll give you the reason why uh, the failure occurred as well and the second one it succeeded so everything was as per the schema so it, it has passed so uh, this is about the XML uh, validate XML and in case if we need to use region checkpoints the next one is region checkpoints so you could use a region checkpoint wherein, for example, you need to uh, check whether an image uh, is as per uh, the, uh, for example, you have a logo on your website, right? So you want to know that whenever your website loads, always the same, uh, uh, or you have multiple clients, and based on the client login, you need to figure out whether the, uh, uh, whether or not basically the, uh, 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 image is uh, as per the client name. So at that point in time, what you could do is you could use this regions dot get picture, and you need to basically go ahead and go to stores, add a region section, and within the region section, you need to add the image that you need to uh, verify against. Now this is the stored image in in your repository. Now the way that you're going to do is you're going to capture the image on the screen for that particular object and then you're going to come over here within the stored image and check whether both those images are the same or not. And you could always use the pixel tolerance in order to uh, uh, basically sometimes some, uh, there might be a small uh, uh, degradation of the image ba based on the uh, 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 system on which you're accessing it. So at that point in time, you could give a pixel tolerance as well. So now, if you go to the region checkpoint, you have to give, give this. You have to get the region from your uh, region section over here. So that is the one that I'm doing here: regions dot get picture and client name. And then we are doing uh, if regions dot compare. So this is the, uh, what I've done is I've created a test object over here and I'm passing the object and comparing that against the region. So uh, let me do this. So uh, regions.check. So what I'll do is if I create an object over here, so let me, instead of doing this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this object here. I'll say set. So for this, I will use one website that we have. Uh, folklore login. Okay. This is the image that I want to verify against. So for example, I have stored this in regions as nows. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go back to my regions and I'll say nows. And here, I will give the reference to the particular object in which this image resides. So I'll take this, highlight this. So let me use the full name for uh, simplicity over here. So set is equal to this thing. OK. Now if I run this, what happens is it checks whether this test object is the same or not. And based on that, it is going to, so let me remove this because this is a function. If I pass some values, I cannot run this. So I'm going to remove this and then run this. So the regions are the same that you got that uh, what is, what it has done is it has compared both the images and it is going to return a value saying that the reason regions were the same and if the regions were different if I tested some other uh, uh, image against this it would have failed so that's about uh, the uh, things that were there on the agenda today so uh,
I'll um, give it over to uh, Alexa and uh, uh, Christina. So if there's anything else, we could always look at it. Yeah, thank you so much, Pramod. Um, yeah, we're, we're ready to close up. Thank you all for attending. Um, look out for a recording in your inbox. This class was recorded. So we will have that for you within, you know, a week or so. Um, and yeah, we will see you at Smart Bear Connect. If you have any questions, please email customers at smartbear.com. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.